it's, uh, it's, it's God's people that has the answer. I understand online they need to hear this. Okay, so uh, the answer is the church. Quickly turn in First Chronicles chapter 12. We need men today that have an understanding of the time. I thought about this passage of Scripture. Brother Derek called me. Uh, I, I didn't know if I would have time to slip in and be with you all. I'm glad that I did. But the Bible said in uh, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the children of Israel, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. They had an understanding of the times. Now, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 what the times are going to be like in the last days. Uh, perilous times, lovers of their own self, okay? Self, self-lover. We don't have time really to do anything for God. I know uh, your church is busting out the seams. Brother Derek's been telling me that's great. That's wonderful. How many of y'all have been saved here less than five years? Would you raise your hand? Less than five years, okay. A good portion of you. How many have been saved less than three years? Okay, all right. So you got some new converts in here. That's great. That's what a new church is supposed to do. That's what any church is supposed to do, right? Uh, so we, we, we talk about a lot of things about the Bible, and, and I believe that as Christians we have a responsibility. Derek mentioned about going to meet with the, the governor. I, I do contact his office. We do have a good governor. I appreciate uh, his stance on things. I prayed with him. I, he's prayed for me. Uh, I've met him with groups of pastors. I've met with him one-on-one. -on -one. I correspond with him, and I text him and let him know I'm praying for him, and he texts me and let me know he's praying for me. And I appreciate having a governor like that. Amen? And there's a lot of static out there. There's a lot of misinformation that people will put out there about, uh, about politicians. But I know for a fact that our governor is praying away the spirit of fear in the Tennessee. Isn't that wonderful? He is praying away the spirit of fear. And I like to take pastors and introduce them to their state capitol, introduce them to their state reps, their state senators, and let them know that we have a voice in that place because we are the people, right? We are the people. It's easy to sit back and, and comment and say, we don't like these things that are going on, but let's go get involved, right? Let's make a difference. Uh, we can make a difference as God's people. We go down there. We let them know we care about them. We're praying for them. And then when we do that, if something comes up that maybe we do have an issue with, it's a whole lot easier to let them know, hey, I'm concerned about this. Would you look at this? Because if, we've nev if they've never heard anything from us and we come in and unload on them with 50 tons of brick, do you think that they're going to listen to us? No. They're not. Absolute, absolutely not. I appreciate our good sheriff that we have. We have a praying man that's a sheriff, Steve Page, here in this town. I appreciate him too. I appreciate having a, having a godly man like that. So we need men that have an understanding of the times, right? Men that understand what's going on in our culture that has knowledge. The Bible said my people perish because of lack of knowledge. I have people ask me, say, well, who do I contact about this? Well, you need, you need to know who God is, but you also need to know in our culture who is your state rep, who is your state senator. You need to know what laws are going on, what laws are happening, and, and, and how they're going to affect you and your family. A week from Monday night, August the 30th, we're going to be having an event that has to do with marriage laws that are changing in Tennessee. Pastor, I hope you can come. It's going to be at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Cookville, 229 West Year Whitson Avenue. New, and we're bringing in David Fowler, who is a fa an attorney with a family action council. These things are critical to the church. You Christians need to be there too, all right? Uh, because these things are what's going to close the doors of the church and drive us to where we have to go to house churches if we don't stand up. And we can stand up, so let's stand up and speak up now, right? Rather than complain about it later. Here's the problem with the church. Most of the churches are reactive, not proactive. We react, but we're, we, we, we can be proactive and head this junk off if we want to. Now, I'm also known, some of y'all may know, I'm known as the wicked liquor preacher. Any of y'all see that wicked liquor video preacher I did here in town? All right, I hate liquor. I hate liquor. I hate liquor with a passion. And uh, I despise it. And how many of y'all were hooked on alcohol before you got saved? Several of you, okay? All right. Praise God, the Lord, uh, the Lord delivered you. And, but see, we have a work to do outside the church. You agree with that? Yes. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. I preached on this the other night at the church. Amos chapter 6, verse 1 says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Yes. See, we got to the place, and most churches have got to the place, they're, they're just comfortable going to church. We go in, and I, um, I was in a meeting with Governor Huckabee 
uh, some time back, many years ago, and I've met Governor Huckabee and heard him speak several times. He was governor of Arkansas, and his daughter was the uh, spokesman for President Trump, Sarah. And Governor Huckabee said this. He said, and I never forgot this analogy. He said, you know, we go down uh, and may buy us a bass boat. People like to fish. And, and he said, we go down and buy us a bass boat. And what if we went down to a, a warehouse and somebody said, why don't you just take your, your bass boat and come down here and rent you a spot, put your boat in, and, and just every Sunday we'll come down to this warehouse and we'll invite all of our friends to bring their boat down to this warehouse. And we'll all get in our boat inside the warehouse and We'll sing songs about fishing. Yeah, now you know where I'm going, right? Yeah, we'll sing songs about fishing. We'll invite our friends to bring their boat down, put it in the warehouse, but we never put our boat in the water. That's the problem in the church today. 90-something percent of them. I preached in a church last Sunday night, and I said, how many of y'all read your Bible every day? About four of them raised their hand. I said, how many of y'all witnessed to somebody this week? About four of them raised their hand. I said, yeah, you're at ease in Zion. And the Bible said there's a woe to them that are at ease in Zion. If we have the answer, why aren't we taking it out there, right? You know why everybody in town thinks I'm crazy because I preach in front of the liquor store? Because all the other... Thank you, Brother Derek, because I am. Because all the other Christians in town that's been told to do it, but God's Word ain't doing it. Right? God told you the same thing to do to me as go out and preach the gospel to every creature. He told you the same thing to do, right? Now, a lot of people have fear. I get it. A lot of people have fear because we're not discipling the people in our church. You know why the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons build a new church about every day in America and why they're taking over in a lot of the false doctrine areas? You know why they do that? It's because they disciple their people. We don't disciple our people. We don't take them out and train them. Now some of y'all may, you say, well preacher, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do if I get out there. I don't, I don't know how to publicly witness. How many of you say, well, I'm a little bit uncomfortable doing that. Would you raise your hand? You, it's okay to, to confess that you're a little bit uncomfortable. All right, I'm going to help you with that. Okay, buddy. All right, I'm going to help you with that. The Bible said, and, and again, in Amos chapter 6 verse 1 said, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and the Bible tells us that we're to go out into the highways and the byways we're to compel people to come in and if we got the answer it's our responsibility as the church to take the word of God to them now would you agree with me this afternoon we have more liberties in America than any other country in the world this is one of the major issues that I speak about about our religious liberties Congressman Harshberger first district great Christian lady that got elected and I spoke to her before she was elected I passed her contacted me and she's in Tennessee up in the Bible Belt in East Tennessee spoke about standing for religious liberty last night China wants to destroy our country and destroy our religious liberties the CCP don't like it that's the Chinese Communist Party by the way and these churches that are giving in to the jab and fearful of all these kind of things, man, they would make the Chinese Communist Party proud. They would. I told somebody they're putting more trust in the jab than they are Jesus. Yeah, that's right. If, God, if God's got all power, He's got all power, right? If it comes my time to go, I'm going to go whether I'm in the best hospital, got the best doctor, got the best health in church. When it comes my time to go, I'm going to go. People say, well, aren't you afraid to go out and preach in front of an abortion clinic? He preached, against, he preached against abortion today. But how many people do you know that go out to abortion clinics and stand there and pray? How many of y'all have ever been? How many want to go? Would you raise your hand? How many want to go? I'll take you, okay? All right. We'll go do it legally, lawfully, and prayerfully. How's that? Friends of mine this morning, if I hadn't been here, I'd have been preaching at an abortion clinic at Carafim in Nashville, Tennessee, out front on the sidewalk. I've been there many times. They had two saves there this morning. They just text me. Isn't that great? All right. There, there's a ministry in Nashville that a guy by the name of Scott Horde, I think, and I've been down there and stood with Pastor Scott. He goes down there every day and prays and pleads. And he's there and he helps those families after their baby is saved. Yesterday, I think, was 318. Wouldn't it be great if Planned Parenthood went out of business? 
Would it, be, would it be great? Well, the problem is we're hiding in our churches and the churches say they're against this stuff, but they won't do anything about it. We say, we profess we know God, but we deny Him in our works. We say, well, we're going to pay our pastor to do it. And because we pay our pastor, and I said this last Sunday night, because we pay our pastor, we think, well, it's just the pastor's responsibility. And we're going to put a little money in and, and make, make ourselves feel a little bit better. And we're going to abdicate our responsibility to somewhere else. You can't buy God off. You can't buy God off. You know why 96, 97% of people in the church never have won anybody to Christ? Apparently they don't have a burden, right? Don't have no burden for the loss. Don't have any burden. Some of y'all been saved out of the raw and you got friends that are still out there in drugs and alcohol and all kinds of wickedness, right? Man, they need Jesus. And we got the answer, right? We got the answer. In the world, the addiction, the fentanyl, and the drugs is now worse than ever before that's coming over an open border. We got more addictions and we got more drugs than ever before. But we got churches on every corner. What, what's happening? What's the problem? Well, we're at ease in Zion. We're at ease in Zion. In that same passage of Scripture, in Amos chapter 6 there, where it talks about woe, it says that they, they weren't touched with Joseph. Read on down, I think it's in verse 6 or something like that. That they were not touched with the sufferings of Joseph. Joseph's brethren put him in slavery. You know, the average church anymore, it doesn't bother them when they drive by these predatory lending places we got in town. And I brought some yellow signs and I'm not advertising predatory lending, okay? Doesn't bother, it doesn't bother people when they hear about people going to jail and in drugs and all sorts of things and marriages breaking up. We're just not touched anymore. And the Bible said in the last days people will be with past feeling. Past feeling. The average church... Average church, if a drunkard came in and he was drunk and he stunk and, and he came in trying to get help, you know what they'd do? They'd kick him out. They would. You're not welcome here. You're not our kind. You're not our kind of po people that we won't come in if you ain't got a little money to put in the offering plate. We got a big budget. It'd be amazing. See, it's amazing. I, I know what some of these big church budgets got. Yeah, you all got a little building here. It's been here a while. People drive by. People driving by looking at the building. They probably wouldn't stop here, right? Let's just be, let's just be realistic, okay? But it ain't the building. <laughs> it ain't the building, amen? He said, wherever two or three are gathered together, there will I be. If you gather in my name, I'm going to be in the midst. There's a lot of empty church buildings in America. There's a lot of them got Ichabod written over the door. They got their stained glass windows. They got their fine places. And, and they got their preacher they pay a big salary on. And I'll guarantee you, he ain't going to preach a message like Pastor Jason did a while ago. Because they fire him. They fire him. How many of y'all know you need to do more witnesses and witnessing because that's what the Bible said we're supposed to do, right? Amen. Hey, it ain't just the Jehovah's that ought to be out there witnessing, right? And they're witnessing the wrong thing because they got a false doctrine. If we got the right one, we ought to be witnesses, right? Amen. Well, I'm going to help you do that today. And this has been a burden of mine as president of the Tennessee Pastors Network. And uh, how many of y'all have ever stood out publicly for Jesus Christ? Publicly. I'm not talking outside the church. How many of y'all have ever done something publicly? All right. Two. Two. What have you done? Yeah, yeah. Were you in front of Sam's few a few weeks ago? I talked to some of them. Yeah, that's right. Talked to some of them. Great. And you, brother? Witnessed. Okay. Brother Cliff. Door to door. Door to door. To door. Really? Wow. Door to door. Huh? You talk about. You talk about making people uncomfortable and saying, we're going to go door to door on Tuesday night. You know how many would be here? <laughs> Pretty few, right? See, we, here's the problem in church today. We want to be served rather than serve in. We, want, we don't want to be a servant. 
You want to elect a public servant. You want to elect somebody that's going to be a public servant. But people, when they come to church, that's why they call it a service. Yeah, you ever thought about that? Serve me. No. We're to go out and to serve people. So if we're to bring the lost ones to Jesus, and if the church has got the answer, I guarantee they're not going to get saved down to wicked liquor store, right? Those people in there don't want them to get right with God. Ain't nobody in there telling them, telling them about Jesus unless there's somebody crazy like me standing out front with a sign. But hey, thank God, that video got shared 40, 50, 60,000 times. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to do more of them. And uh, matter of fact, the other day I went and got the URL. So many people have been referring to me as the Wicked Liquor Preacher. I got wickedliquorpreacher.com. Yeah, that's right. And there's more of them, people getting stirred up across the world. So, so, uh, so you want to do more and you want to stand up for Jesus, I'm going to give you something. Now, I'm not like most preachers, okay? I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't take no money from Tennessee Pastors Network. I work for a living just like you do, okay? And they might be a lot of evangelists that come in and say, you know, if you, if you buy one, it's only $19.99. If you buy three, it's, tw- oh, it's $49.99. If you buy uh, three of them, we're going to give you a special deal in the day only. No. Ain't none of that junk. All right? How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. Who wants it? Who's willing to stand out and hold it? All right. Come on up here, brother. There's your sign. Okay? All right, young man, you want one back there? You lifted your hand? Come on up here. What's your name, buddy? I'm talking to you right there. I'm talking to you. You lifted your hand. Come get it. Come on. This is for you. You can stand out and hold a sign and do something for Jesus. Guess what? If they pass laws in America tomorrow that we couldn't stand out on the corner and hold a sign, everybody in church would be grumping and growling about it, but they never took their liberty to do it. Bunch of hypocrites, right? All right, who else wants a heaven or hell sign? All right, come up here. Now, so if out here Sunday morning you get here early, all right, come on up here, buddy, in the Go Warrior shirt. Come on, you're going you're gonna to have one. Who else wants one? Come on up here, Lloyd. Hey, right, right, listen. Listen, come on. Come, just say, come on, brother. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay. I got. I got. I got. I got. I got more. Hey, I got. That ain't the only thing I got. Okay. Man, we, we got some. We got some good. We got some good scriptures. Who believes that? If Jesus is the way, right? Jesus is the way, and I got plenty. I'm going to leave these here. And if you want more of these, you let me know. I got them. So if you just just think, I told another church in town last 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 Sunday night. I said, just think, if you stood out on the street in front of your church before service. Holding a sign up like this, people in town are going to pay attention to you. They're going to say, what happened down there at that church? See, if some of you will get on that same corner down there at the liquor store on the public property, not on their property, as long as we got a police officer here tonight, as long as you're standing on that public sidewalk, they can't do a thing to you. They can't. You can stand out there and just hold a sign up, just like this right here. All right? How many can do that, amen? Yeah, that's right. How many will do that? Okay, good. Go out there, take you about an hour on Saturday or Sunday, and I fought liquor sales in Tennessee on Sunday. I hate it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday too, but I fought it on Sunday. I was the only preacher at the state capitol fighting on it when it passed in 2018. I met with some of the politicians that were push, pushing it, and I told them what kind of curse they're going to bring on all of us. And I said, I'll go to your hometown and I'll preach on the square against wicked liquor. And I did. I had three TV cameras in my face. It's online. See, we don't stand against sin anymore. We say we're against it, but we don't stand against it. We're afraid it might cost us something. Mm Mm-hmm. Might cost something. Somebody might say something about us. Well, get over it, right? It's called sacrifice. That's right, brother. Who cares what people think about you? Amen. If you're serving King Jesus and you're doing what the Bible says and you're telling people that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, we're going out telling him that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life while the devil is a killer, right? Just like Brother Jason preached. He's a liar. He's a thief. We got the good news. But we're hiding our light in a bushel. 
We're coming inside of a church and singing, oh, how I love Jesus. And don't think about doing anything about the souls that are dying until we come back in the next Sunday. That's why America's going to hell in a handbasket. That's why we need missionaries. Somebody told me the other day, we need to have missionaries come over here from Africa to wake America up. Think about that. We've got the answer. So what? They got big churches and multi-millions of dollar budgets. And, the, and I don't call them denominations anymore. I call them demon nations. That's what I call them. Talking about people being hurt with church and stuff like that. Some of the biggest problem I have out of is, is some of these denominations that don't want to get involved in the things that they're doing. If I'm going to call the politicians out for it, I'm going to call the churches out for it, right? You'd be, you'd be amazed at the churches out there and some of the, even some of the Baptist churches that inside their pastor's pension plan, they owned whiskey in their pastor's pension plan. And they knew it. And then they lied to their people about doing it. So we're going to stand out. We're going to hold some signs. If you want to do it, you let me know. And, uh, but you can go out there and do it yourself. If you're, if you're a little bit hesitant about it, I've got more signs up here. Take them. I'm going to leave them here. And I'm going to tell you real quickly the story, and I'm, and I'm done. Uh, where these signs come from, these came from the state of Washington. A, a brother that I met online saw some of the stuff I was doing on the street, and he said, I want to bless your ministry. I want to, want to provide signs for you if you'll get them out. And I said, I'll get them out. We'll put them out. And uh, he met me, and he's a truck driver. He travels all over the country, and he brings these to me free, okay? What a ministry, right? So if you go out as your church, don't hide these. Don't throw them in the back of your truck. I mean, grab them and go. When the devil gets on your back and he's fighting you, the best thing you can do is go out there on his turf and stand up for Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's right. God will bless your socks off. And I bless me if I'm driving down the road. You send me a picture when you get out there in front of these liquor stores and, and hold it. You send me a picture, I'll run around the barn and shout hallelujah seven times, all right? Because if there's more people out there doing that in our towns, I won't be the only crazy nut, right? I won't be the only one that people are talking about. And the reason it is when people talk about these kind of things in our towns is our churches are doing nothing. It's one thing to preach it in, in the pulpit, but let's go out there to the scene of the sin, right? This officer, he has to go to the scene of the crime. Why don't we go to the scene of the sin, right? right? Why don't we go right where it's happening? Because most of them aren't going to come in here. But you might have an opportunity to win somebody to Christ right there, somebody that comes over and says, hey, would you pray for me? Hey, come over to our church. We want to help you. We want to help you get off that wicked liquor. We want to get you into a place to where that God will help you. Just like Soul Savage Group, right? Man, that, that lady in Knoxville, she is doing a tremendous work. So, if you have an understanding of the times, you understand what we need to do, how we need to do it, and now you don't have an excuse, right? You've got a sign. Everybody knew a sign. Amen? Right. So God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. I trust it's been an encouragement. I appreciate your pastor. I appreciate what he's doing here, and, and I appreciate his outreach. Let me tell you something. This, this man right here will talk to people that 99% of the churches won't talk to. They come in tattooed up and stuff like that. Most of them just going to walk on by. Yeah, don't bother me. Don't say nothing to me. I don't have time. You just ain't my kind of people. Aren't you glad God ain't like that? Amen. <laughs> Whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hey, praise God, praise God, praise God, <clears throat> praise God. We love Jesus, don't we, church? Amen. That's why I wanted you to experience today different ministries. I want you to experience different men of God and shake us up a little bit. Praise God, we need that. Shake us up. Praise God. Get out of our comfort zone. Like he said, Zion, you get comfortable in Zion. Praise God. But one thing I'll say about my church, and I appreciate every man of God here. There's some that couldn't be with us. We've got a lot more women and children than we do anything. and uh, But we've got a lot of men that's being added to us daily. And uh, they're, they're coming in to be discipled. And, uh, and, but one thing I will, I will brag on my church about is me, my wife looked at me because when you said that, Dale, about most churches, if you said, okay, let's have a thing, let's, let's get together and let's go out into there and pray, and most of them, you wouldn't have nobody there. But our church is kind of the opposite 
If we had one of those days where we met together to go out and lay hands on the sick, to cast out demons, to, 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 to do what Jesus has commissioned us to do, we would probably have more people at that meeting than we would on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And that's what we want to do. See, God's got to be able to do something in you before you can reproduce it in somebody else. That's what discipleship is. It's a reproduction, right? If God hasn't done it in you, then you, you ain't going to be able to help do it in somebody else, amen. And so, so we want we want to, we want to raise up a generation. We want to be a part of this, raising up a generation of true, true believers, disciples of Jesus Christ, amen. And that's the goal of this is to to help us to get. And I'm excited about the next meeting. Uh, you know, we're going to try to do this every month and have different speakers. And 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 I know it'll grow real quick to where we won't be able to do it in this building. We'll have to do it in another building, and that's okay. We'll do it in another building, but we'll continue to. To grow, and it breaks down this that hey we can pray for our brothers we can pray for the pastors that's we, we listen I'm going to say this to you church we, we can't fight every fight but the ones that's brought before us the ones God places in our path we can do something about it amen you can't run everywhere but we can be effective where God's called us and, and, and we can be on point with where he's leading us amen so we can come together pray for one another I'm going to put that sign in my yard <laughs> amen heaven or hell you choose I always say that. You know, God gives man a choice. He gives you... But the thing is, I heard this said the other day, and I believe this with all of my heart, and I'll close with this, that we have a choice to choose life or to choose death, to choose blessing or to choose cursing, to choose Jesus Christ and salvation or to reject Him and go on to hell. And I believe it's every man's choice. Some people might differ with me on this, but he said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And uh, that comes with repentance. We know that. But, 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 but I heard this said the other day, that if you go to hell, that you're going to have to jump over every Bible that's before you. You're going to Every man of God that said anything, anybody that's ever prayed for you, every church you pass, you're going to have to go past it. Every, every person that you've seen praying, every word that you've heard spoken, every, every scripture that you've seen written on something, you're going to have to pass over all of that, all of that, and choose to reject all that to go on to hell. And Jesus will say, I've done everything I could do. It was your choice. I heard this preach the other day. I got preached talking about Calvinism. I'm not going to get into this doctrine and all this. You once saved, you made it right at an altar one day, and you're going to be right all the way. That's a lie, buddy. That's a lie. When the Holy Ghost said this to me, He showed me this, brother. He, he, he said it, and then He started bringing Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. He said this. He said, now I want to ask you a question. This is how it was presented to me. He didn't say it in a booming voice. I have a relationship with Him. And He was just ministering to me. He said, now if somebody got saved and received me, got right and, and at an altar or whatever it was, and then all of a sudden they chose to go back out into the world, reject me, deny me, and they did that all them years and they never repented. And they reject me, they curse me, they, they, they done all that. And then at the end of their life they die and then I still take them to heaven with me. He said I would take their choice away from them. God would take their choice to choose. And you have a choice to reject Jesus Christ or to receive Him and be saved. But I'm going to tell you something. At the end of the day, if you did go to hell, it would be because you chose to. But if God be for us, then who could be against us? I'm going to give you all an opportunity. Because I want, I, want, I want to take up an offering. And... Uh,